What's up everyone, it's Caddy with Money Vesting and markets here dropping pretty heavily with the Nasdaq and the S&P down a little bit over 1% with the Dow Jones also dropping over 300 points on the back of a very stronger than expected retail sales numbers. Earnings expectations have been coming in slightly better, but that's because we've seen a lot of downward revisions and not to mention inflation. Obviously last week did show signs of once again reigniting a little bit, ticking higher although still coming in better than expected. And more importantly, interest rate projections are still pegged at no hikes for the rest of the year, but cuts starting now in May, it got pushed back a little bit from March after the retail numbers came out today. So hope you guys enjoy this video. We've got lots to unpack. As always, make sure that you drop a like, of course, subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below if you're interested in joining. There is a 16% annual discount available till the end of this month. And of course, you get access to all the buy and sell alerts, options alerts, trade ideas, intrinsic value spreadsheets, members only private videos. Everything is going to be included with the link down below. So this right here, one of the retail sales numbers coming in very, very strong at 0.7% month over month increase versus the consensus of 0.4%. We had X vehicles month over month increasing by 1%, which was more than twice the expectations. And X vehicles and gas coming in at also just over 1%, uh, also far better than what the consensus expectations were. So bottom line, people are still spending. Consumers are strong and they are. Uh, retail sales continue to be very, very positive, very, very strong in the U.S. economy. So Dow slides more than 300 points, breaking a three-day win streak as bank names tumble as well. Fitch also threatened to downgrade bank stocks. And Viking Global cuts big tech bets in the second quarter as well. And a majority of S&P 500 stocks are trading in negative territory with 442 S&P 500 names were trading in the negative territory. Of course, some of the leaders were fintech, including PayPal, down almost 7%. Now, GDP also on track for 5% growth in the third quarter, Atlanta Fed indicator shows, and that just goes to show how strong the U.S. economy is. You've got a strong U.S. economy, you've got inflation potentially starting to move back higher, and you can couple that with, of course, interest rates that are as high as they are, and they could even, uh, of course, go higher if the Federal Reserve decides to hike maybe once or twice more. We've got the Jackson Hole later this month, so we're going to get a little bit of an understanding from Jerome Powell as well, some insight into uh, the policy path for interest rates moving forward. Although they have already penciled in one more additional hike for 2023 and four cuts priced in for 2024. So this is where we are with interest rates. Like I said, we, the timeline got pushed back a little bit earlier. The market was, was expecting a rate cut starting in March, but now we are expecting their first rate cut to happen in May. And we're only expecting one, two, three, four, four rate cuts. Now the market is about as aligned as it can ever be with the Federal Reserve. The only caveat is the Federal Reserve told us one more hike. The market's pricing in no more hikes um, at the moment and sitting at this terminal rate for the next several meetings, several months, and then cuts, four cuts priced in for 2024. That is very much aligned with what the Federal Reserve's also told us. The only difference is we need to get pushed out maybe one more hike here and this entire bracket needs to be pushed out, like I said, to the right. One more hike, and that's going to be about as aligned as the market can be with the Federal Reserve. So this right here was the mar was the day. Uh, energy stocks dropping, cyclicals dropping, comm services dropping, technology rolling over. Of course, financials were brutal with PayPal down over 6%, American Express down 25 JP Morgan, Bank of America, Visa, every single stock, every single company in that sector selling off and PayPal for its own reasons because Elliott Management also did sell its entire stake in a PayPal stock and semiconductors also rolling over except for Nvidia continues to be very, very strong. Bottom line is we've talked about the technical support levels. We've talked about the valuations. We've talked about the macros. This should not be a surprise. If you've been watching our channel, if you've been basically consuming our market update content. Uh, this should not be something that surprises you or shocks you. This should be something that you are familiar with because it's played out over and over and over again. And this is exactly what we were preparing for when we were selling calls to hedge our downside, right? Speaking of, this right here is another one of my Tesla calls that is now up over 86%, which I will be basically closing very, very soon. The moment it gets up to over 95, 98, 99% profit, 
I'll be looking at selling this call, uh, basically buying this call to close this contract. And the other ones, I'm gonna allow them to expire uh, by November, by December, whether it's in the money, out of the money, depending on where they are, I will let them expire. So that's exactly one of the reasons why we do this, right? Because we wanna hedge. Yesterday I sold calls on Palantir, I sold called calls on Google. Amazon, not so much because the premiums were not that high, but the whole idea was to hedge against that potential downside for a lot of these stocks that were vulnerable to potentially coming down. This right here, again, is the entire market. So everything is brutally red. So all sectors, all 11 sectors in the S&P 500 were red. In the last one week, everything is red. And in the last one month, energy and healthcare are the only two sectors that have pushed higher. Everything else is a straight up down with orange juice being the big winner today. We got lumber prices, cocoa, oats, corn, copper, everything pushing higher. With uh, live cattle, we got coffee prices, gasoline, sugar, ethanol, um, everything selling off. With Bitcoin, a little bit over 29,200. Ether, just over 1,800 at the moment as well. So moving back over to uh, the markets here, Bitcoin really just consolidating sideways, so not really going anywhere. We're seeing a lot of sideways trading, not a lot of volume, and it's just trading in that range for a very long time. Support level is still going to be at 28,300, resistance 316 and Ether also in a very, very similar pattern where it's just trading sideways, consolidating for such a long time. And support level is gonna stay put at 1800 with a resistance all the way up to 1935, 1940 for Ether moving forward. Uh, crude oil uh, started, starts to roll over, which is a good news, which is a good thing for inflation because we're now back below that uh, sort of uh, area of support. So this right here, will go ahead and turn this level back into a resistance for, uh, for crude oil. And of course, that next support level is gonna be all the way down to $73, $74 per barrel. And uh, right now we're back under $81 a barrel at the moment. Now going over to the S&P 500. So SPX getting rejected at that 21 EMA. I mentioned that today was gonna be a big critical test for the market. Can the bulls regain that moving average? The answer is no, we can't. And the bears were strong enough to break us down below 44.40. Well, guess what? We need to be prepared and be ready for us to see 4330, 4300s even for the S&P moving forward. And right now, we're still very much in a reasonable dip slash a pullback category where we're only down 4%, but it doesn't take long for this to accelerate to a potential correction. So just be ready. Uh, 4330, 4350, that's going to be those next support levels kind of inside this green rectangle. And uh, we'll go ahead and turn this level back into a resistance for the market. We just today breached 4440, which was a very, very important support level that we've been talking about for quite some time. We validated that level last week. Of course, we broke down this week. Next up on the NASDAQ is going to once again be that rejection. We talked about it in our yesterday's market update and our last week's market update where I would not be surprised to see the NASDAQ in the low 13,000s. So another 300, 400 point drop is going to be very normal and kind of come down this confluence of that support with this higher low and this horizontal support uh, as well. So that's going to bring us down close to that correction territory of about 8 to 10 percent. Right now, we're already down over five, five and a half percent. So we're kind of moving up, moving above that dip and pullback territory. And we're moving into that correction territory. Of course, if we're down over 8 to 10 percent it would be labeled and considered as a correction in my opinion. And that's going to be the 13,300 to 13,200 level for the NASDAQ. So Apple here still holding up 177. Bulls still manage to hold up 177. It is not or hasn't yet broken down below that support. Very, very important level. The moment it breaks below 177, this is the moment the NASDAQ and the S&P also break down further. And this was the long-standing trend of higher highs and higher lows for Apple. And we talked about it, we talked about it, and we talked about it. And eventually it did break down because nothing goes on forever in the market. This is only a normal occurrence for Apple to break down below this 21 EMA, break down below its trend, consolidate sideways. And it would not surprise me one bit if it does break down below 177 as well, potentially makes its way down to 160s. That's going to be a drop of another... 10% from these levels, and that can result in the S&P or the NASDAQ to also be in a potential correction. And this again, you know, again, I get a lot of comments saying that, hey, Caddy, why are you so negative about the market? Guys, I'm not negative. I'm just giving you it real. I'm just, I'm just sharing what I'm seeing in the market. The moment we break down from these technical support levels, 
is the moment for us to be cautious, for us, for us to be careful, for us to be hedging for potential downside. There's nothing wrong with that, right? We ebb and flow all the time in the market, and that's just how the markets work. We go up, we go down, we go up, we go down. You know, you'll never see the markets go up and up and up and up and up forever, right? It's just the way the markets work. It goes up and it goes down. And right now we're in a potential, uh, you know, a decline considering that we're seeing those breakdowns for the market. Same thing is true for Amazon. Amazon also here validating that support so far at 137. Both Apple and Amazon are just hanging on. They are literally just hanging on by a thread. Amazon down 2%, support level is going to be at 137. The moment this breaks, I wouldn't be surprised to see it down in the 120s. 126, to be precise, is going to be that next support level. Tesla, on the other hand, is continues to sell off. And like I said, this right here is going to be that green rectangle where we could end up coming down to. So low 200s, maybe even 228, 225, 220s. Some of those support levels to watch inside this green rectangle for Tesla moving forward. And of course, those calls, like I said, are going to print really well they're going to be up like 95 98 pretty much worthless at that point and that's when i will be looking to buy to close these calls and i've got like three more uh that i've already shown you guys in one of my other videos uh going over to paypal now and paypal is very strange i'm not gonna lie and i'm gonna be doing a video on this separately as well um and you know now we get to a situation where there's a very simple question that needs to be asked either i'm wrong or is the market wrong? And a lot of people think or believe the markets can't be wrong. Guys, markets are wrong all the time. If you think about what the markets really are, markets are nothing but a summation of all human beings, right? You and I make the market, right? All of us together make the market. So can the market be wrong? Yes, the collective intelligence of over a billion people that are trading the markets can indeed be wrong. And, and oftentimes they are. Markets are either overvalued or undervalued. Very rarely do they actually trade at their fair value, right? So overvalued and undervalued is a discrepancy that can indeed be taken advantage of if you are shorting or if you are buying, going long, right? So markets can very much be wrong. Often, oftentimes people think that, hey, markets can never be wrong. Wrong. Markets can be wrong. And that is actually the accurate assumption to go off of. But that's the analysis that you have to do, right? The big money, most of the money that you, that you will ever make, the big money in the markets, will always be made by having a non-consensus view and being right, okay? It's not just having a non-consensus view. It's not just about taking that contrarian view, right? If the market thinks something, you won't make money if you think the opposite, right? But you also have to be right with that non-consensus view. That's where the big money is made. Think about all the bets that Warren Buffett's made. Think about all the bets that Kathy Woods made. I mean, not recently, obviously, but the biggest bet that she made on Tesla, that was a very, very non-consensus view on the company. And guess what? She turned out to be right with that one call. And obviously, she made a lot of money. So that's where big money is made, having a non-consensus view and being right. Those two elements are very important in making big money. And with PayPal, we have to ask ourselves, either I'm wrong or is the market's wrong. One of those two things is true. Of course, only time will tell uh, what happens with PayPal, but it's strange. The sentiment is really strange. I mean, I posted the company's fundamentals. I mean, $5 billion cash flow, $5 billion share rebuybacks, uh, repurchases. We've got a 495 EPS, um, and we've got 20% growth in year-over-year -year, uh, earnings. We've got 10 to 12% growth in total payment volume. It just, it doesn't make sense to me. You know, and, and we'll do a video on this in a separate video as well. So I'll, I'll talk about all those things. So don't you worry. We'll talk about it because this needs to be addressed, right? Down 6%, down to under $60 once again, uh, coming down to a support at 59 So we'll talk about it. Next up on the list is going to be Square and Square also down about 3%. It's coming down to a very, a very exciting level here. Now under $59. We'll keep a close eye on this um, down to a support at $54, $55. The risk reward profile only continues to get better for Square, so I will be taking a potential position from a swing trading perspective on Square very soon. So we'll talk about that in our members only Discord. We'll talk about that very, very soon. But of course, very, very significant sell off for Square also on the day and of course, recently as well. Talking a little bit about, um, uh, what is it, Nvidia. So Nvidia here continues to move higher, uh, 43 basis points, but once again, getting a little bit of that rejection 
at 440s, 445, and uh, support level is going to stay put at 407. It did get an upgrade on the day today as well. Price target raised to, I think, $540 or something absolutely crazy, but support level is going to stay put in the low 400s, all the way down to as low as 350s for NVIDIA. Uh, advanced micro devices uh, on the day also down getting rejected a little bit at that lower high so this right here is going to be that resistance to watch for amd and that 21 ema and support level is going to be sitting roughly at about 106 607 dollars per share for for amd so consistently selling off uh still trading sideways for the most part and this right here is going to be that higher low for also to watch but of course a breakdown below those levels i'll be looking at selling puts in the low 80s for for advanced micro devices Talking about uh, Meta platforms and Meta here selling off over 1.3%, so back under $302. I did trim my position on Meta yesterday. I did get rid of some of the shares at $303, only because again didn't get a didn't get a great feeling. Technicals were not lining up. Support level is going to stay put at $300, but the moment we break down below this, wouldn't be surprised to see it further downsides, further sell off all the way down to 257, 258 for meta moving forward uh talking about netflix here and netflix also just consolidating sideways so not really moving all that much so we're seeing a lot of sideways trading resistance is going to be at 458 support level is going to stay put at 410 for netflix moving forward so lots of consolidation at the moment for this company google here on the other hand also selling off down one percent getting rejected at around 131 that's exactly one of the reasons why i wanted to sell a call is to make sure that i hedge for that downside so if it ends up selling off even further those calls are going to print. Support level is going to stay put at 127. And of course, a breakdown below this is going to be sitting roughly at around 115 for Google. Microsoft, on the other hand, also continues to pull back a little bit. Now under 322, getting rejected at this level here a little bit. And support level is all the way going to be down to as low as 312. That's where I could see Microsoft kind of settle in uh, in the near term at, at the moment. So 312 is going to be that next target, that next support to watch for Microsoft. And Shopify here, just consolidating sideways and so not really going anywhere down about one percent support level is going to be very strongly sitting at around 54 dollars with a resistance up to 66 dollars per share and finally we got end phase energy selling off a little bit close to three percent still incredibly oversold oversold uh we don't have a support at the moment right now sitting as low as 127 is where the next support is going to be 127 128 is going to be that next support level to watch for end phase energy resistance all the way up to those moving averages and 151 for this company so hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful and a paypal video is going to, be, going to be coming out later today bottom line is we are in a very very significant technical level where the moment it breaks down it breaks down and we start trading in that downtrending channel so we got to be very careful here uh you know de-risk if you can raise cash if you can be more tactical if you can if, that, if that's something that you want to consider but me personally i'm hedging for that downside and i'm also trimming some of my positions to take profits off the table at the moment. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video, found it helpful. If you did, make sure that you drop a like. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Link to our Discord and Patreon is going to be down below with that 16% annual discount available till the end of this month. As always, happy investing. I'll see you all in the next video.